Hi, it's Leo back again with another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about this lens here. Um, this lens I bought for £40 to try and get into bird photography. Um, we're just going to have a chat about it, see how it kind of performed for me. Would I recommend it? You know, all that stuff. So, basically, about four months ago, I wanted to try and get into bird photography. I already had a camera, the camera I'm using right now, which is a Panasonic G80, which is a micro four thirds camera. I had a prime lens and kind of a, a kit lens, they were both alright, but none of them reached that far, I think the, the focal length on this was only 32mm, and I wanted to just try and, do, try and do some bird photography, but the problem with doing bird photography is the lenses are very, very expensive. So I had a quick look on eBay, see if I could find anything cheap, because I didn't know it was something, bird photography was something I really cared that much about, I just wanted to give it a go, so I, I found this, this. This lens here. This is a vintage lens with a micro four thirds adapter on the end. This is non-digital lens, no no like digital contact points. Hanamex. It says at the top. My, my camera is not going to focus here, but it's made by a cam uh, company called Hanamex. Um, it's an 80 to 200 millimeter. So on my micro four thirds camera, it was uh, 100. 60 to 400 millimeter lens um, and I've taken it out once or twice to try and take some photos of birds uh, and I'm going to go through my experience with this lens and would I recommend going with this lens which I paid £40 for or maybe just kind of saving up and getting a, a more expensive lens that's designed for the camera because this this isn't designed for the camera it's got an adapter on um, so the the lens that I'm hoping to upgrade to is actually the 100 to 300 millimeter Panasonic lens. I, can, I found a few of them for about 300 pounds. Um, so hopefully gonna be upgrading to that, but we're gonna have a chat about this lens because this is the one I have at the moment. And I just, this is my entry point into bird photography. All right, so start off with the build quality of the lens. For 40 pounds, this is a very like, this is like the most well-made lens I've ever held. I've not held a lot of lenses, um, but it's it's definitely a, a decent lens. So the the, the this prime lens here that I've got, the uh, 1.7 uh, 25 millimeter. This is an official Panasonic lens. Obviously the image quality of this is really good, uh, far superior to this, um, but it's all plastic, like all just plastic. It's very light, I guess not a bad thing because it's quite a small camera, lightweight lens. This on the other hand, it feels like it's all made out of like aluminium. Um, it's all just solid. So it's, it's heavy. Solid, well made. Nothing on this is digital, so we've got got the this end bit right here is the kind of I think they've whoever sold it to me put on micro four thirds adapter. Takes up this little bit end, it's all metal. Um, but I presume if you buy any of these vintage zoom lenses, you can put your own adapter on. I don't think this looks like it's worth more than like ten pounds. Um, we've got the aperture here, so this is actually a one point four to Oh, an f1.4 to f22 and this is all just yeah you can see the aperture openings it's all just mechanical and then the zoom actually is the way you zoom is uh, by moving this up and down so yeah this would be at um, 80 millimeter and then 200 millimeters in yellow it tells you kind of what focal length you're in and then twisting would be to focus. So yeah. Okay, so that's this is kind of the overview of the lens. I don't think it came with a, it didn't come with any lens, lens cap or anything. Um, so the first uh, issue I ran into while using this lens was actually no. Before we get onto that, you want to see some photos that I I've taken with this lens. So uh, I'm just going to kind of post some videos and what well, should be on the screen right now, some photos that I tried to take. I'm not a, I'm not a photographer. I kind of just went down to like this nature reserve park and took some photos of the birds I saw. Um, none of them are, are amazing. Um, maybe some videos. I think there was a bird feeder I filmed for a little bit. See, so you've got a bit of an idea of what, what, what it looks like, what you can get. Um, First issue with this is it's not digital, so you actually have to go into the settings of the Panasonic and uh, disable. There's a setting you have to disable. I didn't realise it until I had, to, until after I had tried to use this lens with the camera. You have to disable it so that it works without 
like a digital lens otherwise it would just like not work um, but that's not too big an issue second one is the when I try to attach it there's actually a bit of wobble so there's this adapter doesn't really it's not flush with the with the camera but that's kind of I think this might be an issue with this particular adapter I mean it works but obviously it, like it wobbles a little bit like there's a little bit of a gap um, which is a bit annoying and obviously with this being so heavy that it's just like yeah it can be a bit annoying that's, that's one thing I noticed two was the focus on this so it says that it focuses to infinity with this adapter it does not focus to infinity it focuses to about 30 meters then anything beyond about 30 meters is out of focus which is annoying but it's not the end of the world because anything a bird's further than 30 meters away you're gonna you're not really gonna be able to they're not gonna look very big uh, on the camera so you have to get a bit closer than that anyway to photograph birds um, but it would be nice obviously to be able to focus to infinity but this doesn't with this adapter so that's one thing to note um, this has no image stabilization um, which is a bit annoying but it's not an issue too much of an issue for this camera because this has in body stabilization but if you were using like a G7 or something like that um, this is going to be very very wobbly so yeah they're the main annoying things the other thing was the image quality uh, I noticed everything looked a bit kind of hazy and not and kind of a bit a bit washed out the colors were a bit washed out um, so to combat that I used the kind of the vibrant the vibrant uh, I, I bumped up the contrast and the saturation within the camera sort of helped a little bit but it wasn't wasn't perfect so the, the final thing I would kind of change about this lens is the focal length itself I know I bought the 80 to 200 knowing that it was a, a two, it capped out at 200 millimeters but 200 millimeters is actually not not enough zoom or reach uh, for me anyway to photograph birds I feel like you're going to need at least 300 millimeters which would be a 600 millimeter equivalent i saw i've seen other posts online which have said the same that 600 millimeters is kind of like the minimum that you should really be using um, otherwise it's going to be a bit hard to kind of get close enough to birds um, so that's why i was going to upgrade to this panasonic one uh, eventually but i mean for 40 pounds it gets the job done um, if I recommend it, I don't really know if I do recommend it. If you can, if you're using Micro Four Thirds, I would probably try and find a used 100 to 300 millimeter because they've had they've got really good reviews. In body stabilization, digital lens, way way lighter than this. Um, that is also praised as being like a very cheap zoom lens. This just problem with this is just not designed for this camera. The adapter just doesn't fit. Uh, and I've, I've seen reviews of a lot of cheap adapters that they just they're not quite as good as the actual lens uh, attached into the camera so yeah I'll take that into account it's kind of a little bit too unusable I would say to be worth it um, unless you kind of know the compromises um, but yeah this is my kind of my thoughts on this lens